There we go. Ready to jump into the regular board. All right. Let's call this meeting to order at 439. Then the Pledge of Allegiance. We will roll call. Are they any additions or deletions to this agenda? None from staff. Okay. Does anyone have a conflict of interest on anything on this evening's agenda? Do you want to have any comments or corrections on the uh, meeting minutes? Uh, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, board. Gotta start a few things. Sweet. So, uh, following our uh, last support session, we've had some uh, meetings with staff, and we're kind of working through meeting with staff just to to discuss what uh, presentations we'll make to that part of it to uh, try to gather input on um, information that was presented through their uh, staff insight on uh, recommendations and anything that the staff has that they um, that they thought or would, would like to see. And so. Just having discussions around those so that we can uh, more confidently put together some final recommendations to bring back to the board uh, for the uh, next board meeting with some unintended budget that would be based off of those recommendations. So, um, we have um, actually have kind of dove into the, the, the call volume tracking and shared a little bit before, looking at sort of the, the methodology that we're pulling that out and putting, putting information together so that we're uh, trying to. Put together that more accurate version of our call line reporting we've done month to month, month basis on that just to try to make sure that we can validate the data that we're putting together to put that report together so that we share that if there's anything specific that um, the board wishes to see reported in that piece of it um, we'll some updated reports on that going forward and then if there's anything that we'd like to see out of that um, for specific calls areas time of service and some of those type of things that we're looking for that kind of on that so um, right now, that for the April board meeting to look at what we're looking at. So, um, as I shared in the, the pension board meeting, we did the uh, completed the annual FPPA review for the, the retirees and then the retirees uh, that are collecting pensions. And then, right now, we're working on two other audits that we have. I'm working with um, JBG staff to work on that with the Pinnacle Consulting. They do our workers' compensation rates based off of. Um, staffing and so there's a there's a, a couple of different product things we have to pull together to give them their data so that they can work the, the workers' compensation rates on that. So we're pulling all that together and then uh, 
typically looks like it's historically it's been every other year. There's also an FDPA audit um, that comes just on a selected type audit. So we're working on that information now, which um, which they do um, just an overall uh, validation of all the contributions that we made for all of 2021. They send us the reports and we validate that, the, that our information is correct in our system that, that matches. And then they also um, do a random selection of a few employees and then pull all that information to ensure that what we've presented matches. And so we have to um, send in W-2s and timesheets and some of those things to match all that up. So we're pulling all that information together. It's kind of a two-part piece with the uh, part that's due at the end of this month and the rest due at the end of May. So we pretty much got it almost all together. So we're hoping we're going to be able to get it all done at the same time and ties into that. You know, it's the Gazi 68 census data type stuff. We should have all those all those done and you know, both of them done in time. Um, I got that it uh, made it back in, but it should to make it in here. But we've also he's also in meeting, meeting more recently. We're getting down to the, the the time for the the plans and land reviews are coming in for the wastewater treatment plant as well as the water treatment plant. So we're going to do the, the reviews for those. Um, the wastewater treatment plant is actually in. And the water treatment plant within the next few weeks to a month type of thing, right? It's kind of about what we're expecting those to be in. So, um, plan reviews and so on. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What, what, when you actually done in hand, what time frame are they expecting, or what, how realistic is it from your end? In our, our written verbiage for code review, it's 15 days, but obviously, it's a little bit bigger project. Been working with them over the last several months on doing the 20, 30, 40, 50 percent uh, review. So that'll help the end review. A um, couple weeks. It really just depends on what, how clean it is that they submit to the format. Okay. It, I assume they know enough of the format. They do. Yeah. I mean, we, we spell that out on our, our CR process. Yeah. That that review as they're going along will help. It there's more time committed to it, but at the end, it's a, a cleaner submittal instead of just yeah, just dumping it on my own. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And the last piece really is um, as the as things seem like they're starting to open up, we can just continue to monitor state, county, local. Um, the other agencies that have their uh, declaration, emergency declaration, mm -hmm. just trying to evaluate when it would be appropriate to lift that. Um, we're just uh, continuing to monitor that piece and just make sure that you know, we don't lift it too soon, um, to make sure that there's not some other spike that. So we're we'll, we're we'll really watching. I think we'll just be prepared when that time comes that we're watching some of those other local partners do that, that would make a recommendation back to, to lift that. So yeah. just kind of monitoring where we are. Matt, that, that's that's all I have for the. Are we report. still technically the state and county under state emergency? They're, they're, they are right? yes, yeah. So I think we're I think it's watching what's happened with um, the care crisis care crisis. Which, um, it's not state the term exactly right, but that those have started the crisis. They're they're being relaxed. So I think we're really get, probably getting really close to see some of those lift. And so I think from us it would be sort of that. Top down domino effects yeah. type of thing rather than sort of lifting at the bottom if there's yeah. any other options or something, yeah. some other type of funding or emergency funding that we want to grab that thing. I suspect when that declaration goes away, probably any potential funding will go away at the same time. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The okay. state has started to retract their services that they're sending out and they sent out notification that they're not going to be um, funding. Uh, or supplying resources for the surge situations anymore. So that was our first indication that since they're not providing that extra assistance to hospitals, that there is a uh, release in, in pressure. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Okay. How are you doing on the payroll realignment? <laughs> so, and we've had this discussion with that, with that part of it. So I think we're looking at, um, we've, we've got some, um, some, Dates probably mid to, to late April. One of the last things I think will help if we've, we've had some discussion about um, just even more recently, we're probably going to need to do an update to our um, our version of QuickBooks. And with that, it might make sense at that point in time to move away from 
using into it from our payroll. So we so we may be looking at kind of aligning the, an actual different payroll service other than into it to do that with the change of the payroll payroll cycle, um, rather than trying to kind of implement two things at the same time. But we we pretty much got it figured out from the time period of when like when it would be appropriate to do it based off of the our our A and B pay cycle that we do for the line and just looking at it, it will be nice to get off of that miscellaneous cycle, but, but yeah. looking at not wanting to maybe change that, but also change it to a to an approval. And we're back to the point on that. There's some of the other partner agencies that have moved into moved away from that piece of it. One of the it's one of the issues into it works for us, but fire department payroll is probably the most one of the most confusing type of things out there with the with the the FLSA cycles and all the other matching benefits mm -hmm. and things that come with that. And, and into it isn't isn't really intuitive, I guess, in the sense of setting maximum contribution rates and doing things like that, so that it doesn't accidentally over, over contribute in some things. And we've we've had some experiences with that, where you know, folks that are looking to try to you know gain their maximum contributions, but maybe it hasn't calculated, it or we get an extra pay cycle or something in there that, that throws that off, and into it doesn't know to to stop that from happening. So she just wants so, to add yeah. more to help, but I think. I think into payroll is really designed for the private sector. for are pretty straightforward, you know, payroll, payroll policies. When you start getting to, you know, pension contributions that you have pensionable and non-pensionable wages. And, you know, when we look at the different benefits and different contribution rates and different maximums, Intuit isn't designed to be able to track all of those things effectively. Whereas going to a third party payroll service, um, they're able to customize different pay codes and benefit codes. Um, to be able to track those things accurately, eliminate a lot of manual entry that's being done today, which will then by reduce errors on on payroll. So, and so I think it's we just started to have that discussion with recognize the importance of doing that based off just some historical things that we've seen and that that have as we've dug into it more has there's been a longer history of some of those similar things happening that it, it would make sense based off of the fact that we're probably going to have to upgrade our our first you know, input books and then make that much. Time to do both and make those things at the same time. Real life payroll. How are we ultimately going to do from a timing standpoint that that change go to the electronic check paying to? So the, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll pay. So that's kind of a, yeah. a different question. So we're, we're close on that. And the last little piece we need to do is looking at some of the training and things that go along. But we're aligned with that and bringing that in so that we can do that. That is a lot of moving pieces right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we've you know, been able to kind of pull some of that across to be able to do that. Right. And looking at it over the next, you know, next six to twelve weeks or something, what that looks like, and putting those in the right order of doing that. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. We ran into that, oh, I don't know, three or four years ago, some issues with benefits not getting transferred to the right for retirement funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just want to make sure that we're absolutely that is, yeah, that is appropriate. Yeah, not working. And that's it. and it's and that's part of the big piece because when you look at the fire department pension piece of it. And, and all those, all those, because we do use multiple different places when we move, when we do the withdrawals, then there's, you know, there's FEPA portion, there's the, the, the 457 contributions, there's um, the health savings account that go to Rocky Mountain. So there's, there's multiple places they go. So to that part, to make sure that it's pulling the right and correct amounts out, that it's setting up correctly so that the reporting, so that when we have to manually make those different contributions to the agencies that we're doing it correctly, and that they're receiving and reporting on the right amounts where we are. Um, and so the one thing you know, specifically to Intuit with um, health savings accounts, as an example, Intuit will let it, you keep, you keep pulling money out and doing that, even though that employee may have reached that maximum, there's no safeguards in that part of it without somebody physically watching that to make sure that, oh, yeah. that we're not, yeah. you know, if they, they were contributing higher or changed or were contributing not as much. Now they want to catch up mm -hmm. and they make those changes. Mm -hmm. um, it will allow it to over contribute some of those that just doesn't have those. Well, this is the point. One thing you may encourage every employees that we have when we go to this new is to make sure that what they put in or if everything looks good. Yeah. So that they have an issue to, because they know more, you yeah. should know personally more yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And we would, we may over it, but I would encourage them to go in and look at and one of the things that's just the piece of a challenge with the way that the way that we do it is we do have um, our, our payrolls because our payroll cycle is not 
uh, it's not linear. Like we don't know every other Friday people get paid there. Right. You know, some will, yes, some just don't. You know, okay, they will check their pay stubs you know, and pull them off later. Check them yeah. that kind of thing. And they're yeah. trying to realize, well, am I where am I at? Should I, yeah. Am I on track? Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody takes care of their own stuff personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <coughs> and financial reports. All right. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you have the uh, February financial report in the packet. A uh, couple things I just want to highlight again until we get an amended budget in place, um, we're still going to kind of speak some high level because just lack some ability to really provide some analysis on budget to actually given the, the some of the methodology used in the past. Um, but looking at the month of February, uh, total revenue is 129,759. Uh, we brought in 54,000 more than uh, was projected for the month. Uh, property tax is really what's driving that. Um, however, I do want to point out that we did receive another 24,000 in funding from uh, COVID related, directly COVID, as well as ARC funding, uh, which is the American Recovery Act. Um, so that kind of helped us as well. Um, service fee revenue though was under budget by about fifteen thousand, and that's kind of the kind of I mentioned kind of some of the analysis going forward. You know, we when we look at bringing forward a, a budget amendment to the board, those are some of the things we're going to address. The number, the target in there for budgets is is, is not realistic, um, and so we'll bring that back down and, and hopefully see ourselves more in line with budget on that. Um, on the expense side, we're at two hundred twenty-seven thousand in total expenses. Um, good news, that is under budget by about $32,000 um, in savings under administrative costs, uh, both personnel and, and just administrative direct costs are really what's driving that. Uh, when we get to year to date, which is really looking at Jan just January and February, um, our total revenue is $160,000, um, which is actually over by about $9,000. And our expenses are $478,000, which is under by $41,000. Um, the only other thing I just want to point out to the board is kind of our cash position, keep you abreast on where we're at from a uh, cash and debt position. Um, we did end the month with only $27,000 in, in operating cash um, at the end of February, and we were on our line of credit by $450,000. So we're obviously going to continue to monitor that. A lot of those changes that have been discussed and she's working on will help us kind of start improving that position as we get through the rest of the year. So that would be happy to answer um, any questions before we have. Do you have a question, David? No. Nope. Nope. Anybody have a specific question? <laughs> Have a question, you can probably let Chief know and he can get you an answer.
And so a lot of that may just be year end cleanup and accounting. Um, but that's why you'd see probably the difference on those liabilities. Right now, you haven't seen any of that work done yet on being portrayed on those financials yet. So and it's and it does carry that like that line of carried down from the from the tally of the impact. So some of it's some of it's been carried slightly different as a it's not there, and that's part of the biggest piece we're looking at in a cleanup piece and making sure that <clears throat> as we finish that. Year, let me make the, the adjustments for those. Well, I know there's, oh, you have a question. Okay. So, the, if you look at the balance sheet, pension fund, over the February, it's the balance, it's about $500,000. Yeah, so we've not done anything with the pension fund on the balance sheet. In fact, we may even look at taking it off the district kind of financial. It's not the really, the, the yeah. Point. Because it's not really part of our actual fund balance, and it's not and it's not really not part of the balance sheet either. Correct. So yeah. that'll be part of our so kind of year end okay. cleanup stuff, okay. taking care of that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's. <clears throat> I know we uh, it's early on we talked about that being totally not correct. Part of this. So okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm good. I got question I should know this answer but on the tax revenue where does that number come from that's not we budget or is that the accounting sent well, us is yeah so so the budgeted number we look at historical collections as a percentage by month okay. um and so that's where we come up with the budget the actual amount we receive is what the county gives us okay, so <laughs> they, they don't know that so they, they break that down month by month then yeah we get we well, get money like, monthly from the county I know but, but I mean they tell you what it's gonna be that no no, no, no. Means it based no. On what it's just based okay. on it's yeah. what, what gets collected so what gets collected the prior month then about the tenth of on the tenth of the month we get a statement from the county okay. on what was collected from the prior month and then it gets dispersed to us through the electronic transfer after that so it it's very, you know, it has kind of two big camel humps through the years, basically how it happens on uh, tax collection with the only other piece being the specific ownership tax, which um, is also lumped in with that. We, we showed us two line items on that. That one maybe has, a that one's a little just based off. It has kind of tie in with the property tax collections. So that one can tend to be a little bit more flat, but that is the one that 
we just sort of have to budget based off historical, more historical tracking. We don't have anything that tells us that the, the actual property tax revenue is based off of when we do the, the bill dedication. So we know that that's how much we should get if the county collects all of those taxes. Are they actually good about yeah, we, well, I mean, we feel like it's, they collect it, so they'll collect, say, what they've collected in February, and then on March 10th, we'll get a statement, we'll show in the treasurer's statement what they collected in February, and they will transfer all that money to us on the 10th of the month or 11th of the month, everything they collected that prior month. And then, so it's on a month by month basis, it happens that way. And then we do get a, a, some portion of the statement on uh, uncollected taxes so it shows kind of what that what is carrying no, over. Or if it shows the total they collected minus their fee yes and then a net of what we would be getting correct right. and then it shows service fees and uh, county impact fees so that kind of treasure state if they collected any county impact fees then that all comes over to us and then we, we have to make a poll to pull the county impact fees out of that 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 transfer and then put those into the uh, separate I know there's a lot to digest here. So, in uh, recognition of everybody's time, if, if you find questions, let the chief know and uh, we'll. And, I, and I'll just make one of the comments too, from just from the work that James Vincent does. It, they're really working to try to get us month, to, you know, the most current month. So, the challenge comes in those. Set, you know, eight, nine, ten board meetings because when we then we still have to make statements that we, you know we don't get quite to that right amount of time. So um, it's pretty it's pretty accurate to that month basis. I think as we try to getting some additional stuff over on that um, that, that board on that those days. The, the board meetings the fall closer to the 13th or the 14th has gives a little more opportunity to get that done and get the financial reports out to you a little bit earlier. <clears throat> If the board does not come forward with approving the financials today, we do ask that you motion to table them so we get them on the consent agenda for next month's meeting. So, uh, does anybody have any out think you're going to have any outstanding questions and want to table? No, I don't. We have another question, but that's uh, Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, financial reports? Second. Second. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. Financial audit engagement letter. So you see here in your packet we. Um, we did receive a letter from uh, Heaney, Heaney Corp, or Heaney Company, uh, who did the audit for us last year, and they've got a they've got an engagement letter for us that they um, got on the got us on the calendar for, for that uh, time frame. Um, spoke with James Benson, and they are working through that uh, to to be able to do the all the audit prep work and mm -hmm. time, and then do the field work to be able to prepare that for them uh, based off the time frame that they have on the first one. So we. Uh, there's uh, the price we did last year, approximately a 10% increase on that. So their their um, maximum fee that they quoted is the $16,500. So which, um, yeah, it uh, it falls in the time falls in the time frame and it's on page yeah um, so it's gonna be on page 17 of the packet yeah. on about the. To the way down. Yeah. We have, uh, so it predates my time, but um, the board had experience with using utilizing a different company for multiple years and then um, had some had some delays in that, and then there was a, a recognition to change that. So they're um, being able to get onto the calendars is a big piece of the fact that they, they help spot for them there. And then um, this uh, this is also the same part that a couple of other prior districts are using, and that 
in principle doing the same work for the other five districts for the audit cycle. They, they were pretty exactly. timely last year as opposed to the <clears throat> previous company who was not in. And we got them, and they got us on to show on that time frame there to, to get the work started in the uh, course. Have a look at it. Motion to uh, approve the engagement letter. Okay. Not yeah. at and not to exceed price for sixteen five. Thank you. Sorry. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Bylaw updates. Okay. No, no. Oh, fire chief selection. No part of yeah. that, didn't I? Okay. So our work session, we went through the items needed, uh, required for the selection process. Uh, we discussed a job description, requirements for applicants. Uh, deadline for submittal is on the uh, timeline. Uh, selection procedures are on the timeline, and uh, final decision and appointing the chief, new chief executive is also on that timeline. Uh, and then one thing I have not had completed was the uh, posting uh, document and uh, legal counsel has reviewed that and approved it. I sent that to everyone uh, for you to look at. Anybody have any questions on any of those? Okay. Then I need an item. I need a motion to approve those items that we discussed in the work session. And if you want a list of what they are for the motion, I can. Yes, please, only oh, because we didn't have them in the packet. Right. So it's these items. That we have discussed in the two point one two to two point five. Right. <clears throat> Can we do them all in motion so you can compensate it? Actually, um, you, you this might be an easier list. Okay. Read Does that include then the uh, Current and approved uh, posting. We'll approve that separately oh, okay. because we didn't discuss it in the work session. Okay. Job description, requirements, So I don't see an issue with get them all in one. Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah, go ahead and get them all in one. As long as we read them, it. it's stay yeah. each one. Yes, it's stay each yeah. one yeah. specifically. Okay, so I motion that we approve uh, the following work session items uh, into the uh, 
the chief search process. Um, item 2.1, which is a detailed job description, <coughs> including the salary range. Um, 2.2, You want the whole reading of that statute? Um, number? No. You want this? Um, oh. statute and then history. Okay, so yeah, the, the next items are uh, un, under the Colorado uh, open meetings requirements i have a question so i haven't mm -hmm. seen this particular document but if it's a memo from legal counsel you can say the information is stated by legal counsel in memo dated such and then you don't have to read out the individual ones because then you'll be approving okay. that that document the information in the document provided by the attorney okay so cancel that one Okay, so I motioned that we approve the uh, memorandum presented to us by John Schmill, uh, January 14th, 2022. Um, the items required for the chief selection process, which we'll discuss in the opening or in the work session. Work session. And then we don't have to do any detailed list, just you're approving the memorandum. Okay. Because all the details are on that. Okay. Okay. Give me a second. One second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And then I need a motion to approve. The uh, position posting notice, which has been reviewed by legal and which was sent out for your review. You'll need a copy of this to attach, right? It's a motion that we accept the job posting as uh, approved by legal counsel uh, for the search process. For a fire chief, 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 fire fire chief, chief. selection process. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. So, we'll post. The position announcement, the job description, job description, and the job requirements in house, as it is an internal job search. Yeah. Anybody have any questions or? Comments on next steps. So, yes, and that's that's on that schedule that, that I gave that you as well. And I, I do have a copy for you, Ashley. Awesome, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, that that went to John for approval too. So I figured you guys are still working out the logistics on all of that. So they will all be open meetings. We're doing pretty good going doing this once every. There, there's an opportunity to have one executive session for the contract negotiation and then you'll come out of executive session and disclose the uh, the 
you'll, then you'll make decisions relative to the negotiations that were discussed in that final executive right. session opportunity. So all of the meetings up until that contract negotiation will, will be open meeting. Okay. So now on to bylaws. At last month's work session, we presented um, a red line version of the district bylaws and have given the board an opportunity to review it. I haven't received any comments back from the board. Legal counsel has acknowledged receipt of the red lines, um, but he has not had time to review or provide comments. So what we're envisioning is that the next board meeting will provide one last opportunity to make comments or changes on the red line version with the addition of the attorney changes and comments. And then the following meeting, um, the board could approve or you can move approved post attorney comments. It, it just kind of depends on you know how how you guys feel about the changes to the proposed bylaws and what the attorney comments are. It seems like when we had just talked about the uh, incident command courses that we decided the ones that were most appropriate were the 100 700. That's the ones that I took that I could explore. So we missed about four or five, but I think we're going with 100 and 700 because okay. those seem to be most appropriate for what we as a board. Okay, I will reduce that down to just those two. Yeah. Okay, I, other than a few minor typos, uh, oh, and we were going to add something about the electric, electronic payments rather than checks. Um, <clears throat> Only thing that I had was, uh, and I, it would probably just be easiest if I email you tomorrow. It's just the under election of officers. Uh, it says officers shall serve for a term of one year, and we've always elected officers <coughs> for two years after each election. Um, and unless that is a statutory issue. Um, <clears throat> so that, that would be my only question. They have the, the basic requirements for officer positions listed in the SDA manual. I will, I'll go back and double check that in reference and if the board has a preference. We can certainly change that to every other year instead of I, I apologize, Director Reed. Was that a red line change or no? That... Uh, it's six point six, okay. and it's the the last sentence. So I, I just had a question on that. And if that's something we need to change, you know, we need to be aware. <clears throat> Anybody else? Okay. Well, then we will wait to see what legal has to say. But otherwise, it looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we should have them back by next month for legal. Yes, we should have them by the April board. As soon as we get that information back, I'll distribute it out to the board for review. Okay. Does anyone have anything else they would like to discuss? I apologize. I see, I see that I have on there desks and presentations twice from last month. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, missed, I missed it too. So, so we will, yeah, we'll take it. I, I missed it on the previous.
I thought you had to tell me just now. Tell me when you had to split it into yeah. two different oh. creatures. <laughs> so I was waiting for the bus to show up, but I didn't see. Still get two two sets of eyes to review and both missed steps. Not a big issue. Um, oh, calendar items. I did happen to notice that on the printed calendar and on the website, the uh, May meeting is stated as being May 18th and it should be May 11th. Okay. Oh, no, like we did catch that once, but maybe we just haven't updated it because I do remember that popping up. Yeah. Um, I'll make that correction. I apologize. Thank you. And it, it's on the website that okay. way as well. So I'll send it on to confirmation to the director so okay. that you guys know that it's yeah, corrected. I, I ran through them the first time and didn't catch it. So <laughs> I don't know why it popped out at me this time. But. Okay, so let's see. We have the ballot placement drawing board meeting next month is 13th, and then we have the candidate forum. We've collected all of the candidate bios and photos. We'll start um, really pushing the advertising and um, information out to the community about the special district election post the municipal election. We don't want to create any confusion. We want to make sure that um, we're giving ourselves the best opportunity to get our candidates exposure and uh, not Again, not confuse the community between the mail ballot and polling place election. We got, we'll have to work hard to encourage people to come back out to vote, um, even though they already sent in a ballot for the municipal election. So we wanted to keep them keep them very separate. So pending April 6th, we'll start to see more information coming out about fire district election. Okay. Well, the town excitement is Okay, if there are no other items for discussion, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second? All second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, 527. Uh-oh. Uh -oh.